Easter Seals Hawaii, serving Hawaii's families for 70 years. This program is made possible through the generous support of the Sultan family and Na Hoku. Matson, Island Insurance Companies, and First Foundation Bank. Aloha Kanewa, Danny Kleikini. I've been Ohana to Easter Seals Hawaii for over 50 years and for good reason. While nonprofits struggle day to day in these challenging economic times, Easter Seals Hawaii continues to be an essential source for people in need. This 70th Easter Seals Hawaii anniversary special is a look at the spirit of aloha embodied in a truly kama'aina organization that provides services throughout the state. It takes a whole community effort to early identify, treat, and support individuals and families with special needs. Please stay with us to learn how you might kokua. One of our goals with this 70th anniversary is to educate the public on what Easter Seals does. Many people know our name. Not everyone knows what we do. We have a broad reach in the community. We help not only the individual, but the family because when the individual is able, they're empowered, when they achieve their goals, they lead a fulfilling life, that extends across the family, it extends across our community. My first recollection of Easter Seals is the Waikiki Shell in 1975. I had been asked to come on as a guest co-host at the first Easter Seal telethon. Arthur Godfrey at that time was one of the biggest names in show business. He loved Hawaii. We had an 18-piece orchestra, stars from Hollywood. We had no idea what kind of money we were going to raise. With the help of people like Danny Kalekini and L. Harrington and others who were involved, and we did about 20 of them, I think, over the years. We raised a couple of times over a million dollars. And that's how I got connected to Easter Seals. And I learned what Easter Seals was about and I was hooked. So I have seen literally thousands of families and how they were impacted by the services that Easter Seals provided. The Sultan School up in Makiki is a great place, kind of the home base, and that's where it's been happening for years. So my grandpa was pals with uh, Ingram Stainbeck, who was the governor at the time. They'd have a cup of coffee every now and then. Governor Stainbeck would lament that the public schools couldn't handle crippled children. He'd complain about that over breakfast with my grandfather. And grandfather would go home and share this with my grandmother. And they basically came up with the idea of, let's start a school that teaches these children how to interact in society and they'd find braces for them and crutches. The idea is when you graduate from this school, you'd be able to go into a mainstream public school. So my grandmother really became passionate about this. She put together a group of people who had a lot of energy and a lot of desire to help the community. There was Dorothy Devereaux, Duke Kahanamoku, John Burns, who later became governor, Judge Chuck Mao and Hilo Hattie. They had mostly kids with cerebral palsy who had difficult times walking and they found equipment that would help them get through life and live life more normally and independently. Eventually, when Easter Seals, the national organization, wanted to come to Hawaii, they approached the family and said, well, we'd like to take over Sultan School and make that our beachhead in the state of Hawaii. And that's what happened. One of the things that separates Easter Seals from other nonprofits nationally as well as locally, I think, is the nature of our funding. 60 or 70 years ago, we were selling Easter lilies on sidewalks and we would support our programs. When you couldn't sell lilies year round, they decided to put the impression of the lily on a stamp. And there came about Easter Seals and also the name of the organization. All the money that we raise here in Hawaii, fundraising, as well as state contract money, stays in the state of Hawaii. Something like 90 cents out of every dollar goes directly to our programs and services. Only 10% goes to overhead costs. That's phenomenal. We rely really on the largesse of the community and the support of good people, recognizing the work we do in the community to make our ends meet.
I remember one father coming in in tears telling me of going to the emergency room 15 or 16 times a month with his son with grand mal seizures and still having to work and support a family and yet they held it together. Uh, my, my impression of these people, my respect for them is just immeasurable what families have to go through with disability issues or other health issues and it really brings things more to focus. Easter Seal Hawaii's early intervention program was one of the first of its kind in the nation. Early intervention helps infants and toddlers work toward development goals at a time when children are most ready to learn. Nationally, the number of children who need early intervention services runs between 3 and 5 percent. Uh, last year alone, Easter Seals served over 1,100 children and families. Children qualify for early intervention through utilizing an assessment of child development and that assessment is a tool that we standardize across the state. In the brain of a newborn child, neurons rapidly begin connecting. And while this continues forever, most of it is complete by age two. This is the basis of early childhood development. ECD spans from the moment of conception until the beginning of primary school and encompasses four areas, physical well-being, health and nourishment, cognitive development, memory and IQ, linguistic development, a child's vocabulary and ability to read and write, socio-emotional development, a child's perseverance and ability to work with others. This is ECD. In addition to that, there are certain diagnoses and disabilities that will automatically qualify children. And some of those things like Down syndrome, like autism and cerebral palsy are things that have a high risk of developmental delay just by their nature. My family and I had a concern about her two-word sentences, and now she's on the Dean's list. For Adriana, it was speech therapy. She was diagnosed with hypotonia at about a year old. She didn't have the right muscle tone to do the same things that one-year-olds her age would be able to. Easter Seals has given my girls the opportunity to do things that they haven't been able to do on their own. We are actually one of the first early intervention programs in the nation. Currently, we have six programs providing early intervention services here on Oahu, as well as Kauai and the Big Island of Hawaii, providing services to families and children from birth to three years old who have disabilities or are at risk of disabilities in a model in which the family is empowered to be able to use those services within their everyday routines. Years and years ago, early intervention was done in the center where children were dropped off, received services. In the last many years, Easter Seals has been a leader in providing those services out in the community. We provide services in the natural settings, which include the family's homes. We provide a number of services in child care settings so that what we do is actually modeling for families and child care providers those things they can do throughout the week. My daughter is a tough cookie. She's been through a lot. She handles it with a very sweet spirit. Allie has a small deletion on chromosome 15. It's a pretty rare, um, not even doesn't even have a name, so it's a rare diagnosis. Um, it's caused her to have delays pretty much across the board. With the help of Easter Seals early intervention people sort of guiding us and even more so than the knowledge and the professionalism is the caring spirit that these people have. You know, honestly, I can't imagine life without them because we wouldn't have known what to do with our daughter to give her what she needs to progress. I don't know what, what Allie's future holds. I know that She's going to have a good life because we're going to see to that. People with disabilities are just as sensitive as we are. They have the same goals. They have the same um, 
aspirations and sometimes the rest of us don't give them that credit that they want the same things that we do. Coming up, this segment brought to you by purepacific.tv. There is a place where inspiration resides in sand, sea, and sky, where nature's treasures transform into works of art, where the most beautiful moments of your life live on forever. Nahoku, Hawaii's finest jeweler since 1924. Visit any of our stores or nahoku.com. These islands are very special. It's where I grew up. It's where I learned life lessons, like how hard work and commitment can overcome any challenge, and that your actions speak much louder than your words. So honor your loved ones, because family is everything, and to be mindful of your community. As a proud local company, Island Insurance shares these values, and that's why I chose Island as my insurance company. Island roots, island values, island insurance. At Territorial Savings Bank, Hawaii's best checking account is the best deal in town. With free standard checks, mobile banking, and 28 branches statewide. Territorial Savings Bank, member FDIC. You can call me Robbie. You can call me Robin. You can say I'm ridiculous. <laughs> or rich. Or remarkable. Oh, Alaska. Just please. Please. Don't call me retarded. Words can hurt. Easter Seals doesn't focus on disabilities. It focuses on individuals' abilities and helping individuals achieve maximum independence. When you think about what the face of Easter Seals is, you know, we're one of those faces, one of those families. His father and I expected just a regular, normal, happy, healthy baby, but we encountered challenges along the way, and we remember that day really well. His neurologist put the films up on the wall and turned to us and said, we have some problems. Uh, we knew we were entering a world of special needs, we went straight up to Easter Seals. Asking why this happened to us, I think we tried so hard to do everything right to have a healthy, happy baby, and there are times where it's really hard. It, help that we've received through Sophie, through Easter Seals, through many friends, many family, um, has really, really helped. There's a large percentage of families out there who don't even know that Easter Seals has these services available that could really benefit from the services we provide to them. And so if there are physicians out there who aren't referring to Easter Seals, please do, because there is great benefit to providing early intervention services. And I think all the more recent brain research that has come out in the last decade shows that the greatest benefit you're going to have on impacting children's development is in those early years from birth through eight. And one of the things that I've seen over my 20 years is what early intervention can really impact in a much broader scale than just those first three years of life. There are a number of children that were told that they'd never go to college, that they would probably always be part of a program where they would be separated from typically developing peers. Well, I can tell you, I know a lot of 25 and 30 year olds now who have master's degrees, who have their own businesses, who are married with their own kids, who never would have gotten there without early intervention. It was pretty scary. We weren't sure what, what to do. And once we realized Corbin had Prolator Willie syndrome, the services that uh, were provided to us through Easter Seals gave us a big sense of relief because I mean, what we're up against is new parents. We knew we couldn't do it alone. And Easter Seals came in and provided physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. And when he was in elementary school, he was in the after school 
program, but it was relatively isolated from the rest of the, the kids. Uh, we're both working parents. Mona and I felt like pretty much he was just rotting there. Then later on, discovering Easter Seals again, been able to develop his social skills, self-help skills. He'll come home now and he'll actually want to help with preparing meals, cleaning up. I mean, that's part of the hopes of parents is that as we get older, your kids are going to help you out. I realized later on down the line with Corbin's diagnosis that I'm going to have to stay as healthy as I can so I can be with Corbin. We can help each other out because as much as possible, I'd like him to be with us rather than to have him put him in a home. Uh, but every, every step along the way, any help we get along the way is greatly appreciated. Easter Seals provides that relief for us. My parents used to donate to Easter Seals and they would send out these stamps that we would put on the back of cards. Growing up, that was my first experience with Easter Seals without actually knowing what kind of services they provided. So the connection from when I was growing up, later on, what my parents are doing to donate to Easter Seals, what I can say is you never know who you're gonna be helping down the line or needing those services yourself. Easter Seals Hawaii's Youth Enrichment Services Program provides young people social recreational opportunities in a safe and nurturing environment that supports and encourages self-esteem, independence, and social growth among youth with developmental disabilities and other special needs. The surprising thing that you always learn at our program about the youth here is that they have the same goals as um, any other youth their age. They want to get a job or go to um, classes at the local community college. They want to make friends. Katie was born in March of 1984 and about six months later we found out that she just wasn't progressing like a normal six-month-old should. Katie has Down syndrome. She's delayed mentally and physically. She has cerebral palsy. She has seizures. But the number one thing that CMV left her was being totally deaf. And the only one company or organization that would take Katie at that time is Easter Seals Hawaii. She started learning sign language. She started learning how to use her gross motor. Her little, um, little body then started growing again and how after seven years how to walk without a walker. Easter Seals Hawaii has just been a home to us away from home. Oswald Jim is Katie's personal assistant. He works for Easter Seals and he has signed to her uh, saying, I help you. <laughs> He takes her different places. Right now, she's in the adult section for Easter Seals. Today, they're going to VSA Arts at the Academy, and Katie does weaving. Oswald tells her, okay, do this, do that, you know, go right, go left, and she's done just some fantastic work. And then from there, they'll go to powerlifting for Special Olympics. Yeah, it's sometimes things easy, but they help me, support me, assist me. Also, she took some painting classes too, yeah? Art classes, so. Our disabled and our young adults and older adults have come a long way. Um, a lot of it has been the fight of parents. A lot of it has been the fight of the institutions saying, we can't keep these kids in four walls. At one time, they would just be all stuck in a room, but now they're out there in the community. We've come a long way. Thank you, she says. <laughs> This 70th Easter Seals Anniversary Special has been brought to you in part by Nahoku, Hawaii's finest jewelers since 1924. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Mortgage loan rates are low. Come to Territorial Savings Bank and apply today at any of our 28 convenient branches or with any of our 11 loan officers. Territorial Savings Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. For the last 60 years, Matson Navigation has thrown an annual Christmas party for the kids of Easter Seals. Santa Claus comes and brings gifts and they have lunch and they bring their parents and grandpa and grandma. But Matson has had that commitment. They've gone from one CEO to other people. I mean, over the years, that one thing is constant and they always tell the incoming the CEO, please continue the Santa Claus event for Easter Seals, and they do. We want to provide opportunities for kids to socialize with each other and socialize again with typically developing kids. Fun activities and some place for kids to go. Ideas for employment, preparation for their future. I was born with hemifacial microsomia, a birth defect that stunted the development of half of my facial features. Because of this condition, I had an extra ear hole and skin tags on both sides of my face. I also have a narrow windpipe, a shorter than normal tongue, a missing jawbone, and many other dental problems. Since I was two years old, I've had 10 surgeries, and I have another one scheduled in 2016. But I never really felt sorry for myself. I've always believed that I could share my testimonies with others and change the lives of the people I met every day. In sixth grade, I discovered my passion to be behind the camera instead of in front of it. I continued to pursue my filmmaking career at Iolani School. Now, I'm attending Emerson College in Boston and honing my craft as an editor of motion graphics. When I was growing up, Easter Seals was a home for me. Although I don't remember the early learning program until the age of three, I do remember as I got older, I always felt loved, liked. I always felt like I belonged somewhere. Easter Seals inspired me to never give up. They inspired me to aim high, to take risks, and to never settle for no. People always ask me how I stay positive and how I push through adversity. Well, the love and support of friends and family are the reason I will always get back up. And Easter Seals is definitely a part of my family. Some of these kids and their parents have never even considered that employment is an option for them. So it's really planting that seed um, at a young age, letting them know that if they want to work, they can work. Meaningful employment, a real job, is an important part of successful life. Easter Seals Employment Services provide a customized approach to matching individual talents and skills with employment opportunities, regardless of labels or diagnosis. Our focus is towards independence, helping people to have autonomy so that people can be independent and live their lives without always being surrounded by people that are paid to be with them. I like working at Ryan K because I enjoy cars, removing batteries, recyclables, tires and rims. I wash the vehicles. Every Friday I work. I also have lunch at 12. I like to work so I can get paid. My dream is to race at Hilo Oval Track with my own truck, save money towards my dreams. I've been appointed by the governor. This is my fifth year on the Hawaii State Council on Developmental Disabilities. One of the m most important things that the, the council does is advocate for people uh, with disabilities to live, live uh, independently. I've been with Easter Seals from around 1978 to now. I just like living life the way I am. That's life for me. I have a learning disability. I got into a car accident in fourth grade. My whole right side got paralyzed. I give them an allowance to live on because I want them to be independent. That is their dream. I want them to be as independent as possible. Stacy, the Easter Seals worker, is there um, to help train them how to manage the allowance I give them. I help the Ahinas with their everyday living skills. We also work on budgeting and shopping skills. Uh, we also work on their 
um, calendar schedule. Independently is to like uh, live on your own, pay everything on your own. We try not to show our disability and we, we want to be normal as like everybody else. If you have a disability, it's very hard to find help. Easter Seals fills this very, very, very important gap. It's a, it's a struggle at first, but that's how we stick, learn. Yeah. <laughs> That's we how we stick learn. Stick with it. And, and if we do it wrong, we, we did it and we have to learn from that mistakes. So we're learning day by day. I like my job. Why? Because I, I, I like to work with people, yeah, work with new people. Cody was probably first diagnosed uh, at an early age. Uh, he had, uh, he actually had ear, ear surgery when he was probably around four. And then uh, and that's when my sister noticed some of the, I guess, the, the differences that he had with, um, with other children. Cody has intellectual disabilities, so uh, his ability to, like, maybe say the time, he won't be able to really understand the differences in, in, in like, if one o'clock is before or after two o'clock p.m. You may have to repeat some of the instructions that you give to him over um, over a, you know a duration of time. I put the shirt in my tank and then the goal for Cody is is to have independence. And so eventually what it means for me as his job coach and not his auntie is that he won't need me to be here with him. Um, and so Easter Seals has actually allowed me, because uh, since uh, moving back to Hawaii after the, the death of my, of my sister, his mother, uh, Easter Seals has allowed me the opportunity to actually come back and, and be a job coach and spend time with him. So we've been very fortunate, not only for the services that Easter Seals offers for, for Cody, um, having his disability, but also for me being a, a family member, um, the opportunity to figure out how I can help. All right, yep. okay, so we're gonna have a good day? Yeah. What do we? Yeah. We are a warehousing and fulfillment and delivery service. Basically, we don't have any products of our own. Everything in here is our customers' products. They send them to us in big quantities. And then every day they send us orders and we pick and pack. We felt that it was time for us, uh, since we were enjoying some growth and success, to do something to help the community. So we reached out to uh, Easter Seals Hawaii to fill a new position here, working with some special needs guys. And the whole, the whole concept was to provide them with a normal starting wage that we start everyone else out at. And they come to work every day and do a good job for us and they're contributing members of society paying taxes and earning a normal wage and over some time it turned out to be a wonderful situation for us. It's a win-win all the way around. Uh, we're helping to provide some jobs to some folks who might not otherwise have a job and at the same time we get gratification and satisfaction out of working with them on a daily basis. One of the myths is that people with disabilities get injured more on the job. That's absolutely not true. There's no evidence for that. We find people with disabilities to be extremely reliable. When I meet business owners and they make that decision to hire somebody with a disability, is it adds to their culture. Uh, people with a disability that are working really hard encourage everybody else around them. Um, they bring an atmosphere of family to the business. He's eager to learn, you know, he's no give up. And I keep telling them, just concentrate on what you're doing. Push them down. There you go. There you go. And you know, you wouldn't. Yeah, it's all because of he, he did it. And he tell me, no, you help me. I go, no, you help yourself. You know what I mean? Uh, they can count on these people and they want to be there. And that's what you want as a business owner is to hire somebody that really wants to come to work every day. I, I like my job. Why? Because cause, cause I, I get to make boxes. I like getting up in the morning because it makes me feel good because it makes me, I feel welcome to be here. Yeah, I like it a lot so I can support my girlfriend and my parent and my family and I'm always willing to help people. Yeah, that is my goal is to help everybody in the warehouse. I absolutely recommend that 
uh, uh, other businesses like ours uh, work with Easter Seals uh, to help their business because it's been good for us. This job isn't just a job. What gets me up every morning is knowing that people's lives are changed, not just for a day, but for the rest of their life. They're joining the biggest social club in America, and that's employment. We all get up, we all go to work every day, and they should be included in that. So to be able to be a part of that is a privilege. It's a win-win because our, our regular employees work hand-in-hand -hand with the Easter Seal Fellows every day. There's no cost uh, to us uh, other than the wages that we're paying the Easter Seal Fellows. And everybody looks out for everyone and it's great for our business and it makes all of us feel like we're making a significant contribution and helping others. This 70th Easter Seals Hawaii anniversary special is a look at the spirit of aloha embodied in a truly kama'aina organization that provides services and supports individuals and families with special needs. Coming up, we'll explore the many facets of Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD. You can call me Robbie. You can call me Robin. You can say I'm ridiculous. <laughs> or rich. Oh, remarkable. Oh, Alaska. Just please. Please don't call me retarded. Words can hurt. This 70th Easter Seals Anniversary Special has been brought to you in part by Nahoku, Hawaii's finest jewelers since 1924. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Approximately 1 in 68 people are born with or may acquire autism spectrum disorder each year in the United States. It is one of the leading health issues facing the nation. ASD is a developmental disorder that impacts a person's communication, language, social interaction, and behavior. And in severe cases, individuals may have little or no independence, nor do they find a pathway to communicate with the outside world. ASD has captured public awareness with films like Rain Man, and the Emmy Award-winning HBO film on Temple Grandin, where we see amazing accomplishments by people with Savant Syndrome, wherein a person with autism demonstrates profound and remarkable capacities and abilities in music. <music> Mathematical abilities and remarkable memories. Approximately half the recognized savants are autistic, while it is estimated that 10% of those with ASD has some level of savant abilities. Savants have demonstrated brilliance in the arts. Stephen was mute until the age of five. He has a phenomenal memory and is able to memorize cityscapes, landscapes, how many windows, floors, chimneys. I'm very proud of my work. No, they weren't going to let me become a recluse in my room. This is what makes me crazy, because I've been out to Silicon Valley. I've been to Disney Imagineering, I've been to Google, I've been to Pixar, I've been to a whole lot of different places. Oh, it's all full of people mildly on the autism spectrum. <laughs> you know, all kinds of people there. Some of them old, older people. Now, where a diagnosis later in life can be helpful is in understanding relationships. But when we're dealing with these more milder people on the job front, we've seen them get held back. 
not learning any work skills, kind of overprotecting some of these kids. What you got to do is you got to stretch them. You got to push them just outside that comfort zone. Don't chuck them in the deep end of the pool. Don't give them sudden surprises. But if you don't stretch them, they don't develop. Easter Seals Hawaii has stepped up as the primary provider of assistance to patients with autism spectrum disorder. This very unique combination of talent and deficit. For 16 years, the only thing that I can think to say to people to explain it is spend one day of your life not being able to tell people what you want or need in any form. You can't point at it, you can't speak about it, you have no way to tell people just your basic wants and needs. Now imagine that's your life and that's every day of your life. Movies like Rain Man or The Temple Grandin Story, they show a great example of, of how people have dealt with this disorder, how they have lived their lives. But it does not completely show that entire spectrum. There are so many individuals that have little to no communication and that impact on their life is is remarkable. It was about the age of a year that we got a diagnosis of autism for her and she also had other health things going on. So pretty much her whole life she has been, um, she's had special needs. So for Katie, autism means that she feels the world and hears the world and senses the world at a much greater rate than us. So if you can think about, let's say, something that irritates you, nails on the chalkboard is one, that just is somewhat unbearable. She feels it all. She's bombarded by things. So if she's not looking at you when you're talking to her, it's because she can't look at you and take it in and process it at the same time. It's too much. Katie requires a lot of care because she does have seizures that are dangerous and so she requires 24-hour monitoring so she's on a video camera at all times at home we have many of the same conversations um, over and over again but she delights in them so when she delights in them for me that's really happy but little things are hard for her like I help her I help her get dressed I help her bathe. I'm, I'm pretty much taking care of all her needs. And we're teaching her certain levels of independence, but uh, most certainly she'll never be completely independent. To look at someone who potentially at six, seven, eight years of age has no communication, to see the difference in their life when they learn that communication and, and how now a lot of places are open to them. They, they now have the ability to to interact with peers. They now have the ability to interact with their parents and, and what that impacts in terms of their quality of life is absolutely amazing. And you cannot, you can't imagine what it is until you see it. Her joy and when she, if she can give me one little smile in a day, there's, there's truly nothing like it. I mean, when she looks over and makes that eye connect, which is hard for her, and we're both lit up, smiling, um, it's, it's the absolute best. I think I want people to know that Katie is filled with love, and she does care very much about her connections in this world. And people matter. How people act toward her, look at her, and respond to her matters greatly to her. I've had several situations where there have been a lot of people that have said, this is the best this is going to get for this child. And something changes and they learn language at a whole new level and what that does to their life. And to see what that does to a family who may have been told, don't expect anything more than this. It's amazing. It's, there are parents that have said, I feel like I have my, my child back expectations for Katie have changed throughout the years. I think it's a uh, possibly a difficult thing for parents who have kids with special needs. Uh, many of us, I've seen kids with autism recover completely. I've seen it with my own eyes, kids who are very affected as a, as a toddler. Um, and I think we all hope that for our child in the beginning of therapy. And then I think at around 10, 11, we start to realize that our child probably will live with these special needs their whole life. And um, I think for me, I switched very quickly or maybe not so quickly um, to I want her to be happy. I want her to be part of a community. I want her to feel valued and I want her to be loved. And I guess really looking at that, 
That's kind of what I want for everybody. Easter Seals Hawaii is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation, provider of health and human services, not affiliated with any religion. It is founded upon a common passion for caring for those in need, perpetuated by the talented professionals and volunteers who share this heartfelt mission. We have almost 500 employees. We are on the four major islands. We have outreach programs that reach to all islands. We have 13 facilities from which we provide either services or we house our administrative staff to perform those services in the homes and throughout the community. We are very proud of our staff and of those who volunteer for our organization throughout the state. We have many members of our staff who've been with us for decades. We have others who come in with passion and who provide services for people in need. Uh, it's a heart-wrenching and powerful thing to see in action on a daily basis. We welcome anyone who is interested in volunteering. There is always something for everybody. days of my participation on the board at the Chicago National Convention. A gentleman named Fred Ida, who was a 50-year volunteer for Easter Seals Hawaii, more than anybody in the country. And the national organization recognized Fred that year as the lifetime volunteer uh, for all of Easter Seals nationally and created an award that year. And every year now that is given in Fred's name to recognize that person through in the country who does the most on a volunteer basis. It's a very impressive thing, and it's a reflection of the type of volunteer spirit that we have in Hawaii. My son is actually somebody who comes here and he volunteers. Um, and they call it volunteer, but for me, I, I prefer to look at it as building relationships. I think that it's really important that we encourage and develop relationships, um, especially with people who have disabilities. And so for my son, when he comes here, you know, he's, he's developing friendships with the kids. And if he's on a trip or if he's not here or if he's sick or whatever, the kids are always saying, where's Nick, where's Nick? And, you know, they look forward to him coming. And he started to play music with them. So he comes and he um, teaches them to play the ukulele. The kids love him um, and he enjoys spending time with them. So originally the idea was that he was going to come to Easter Seals to volunteer and just have something that he can do after school. Uh, but as that started to develop, I realized that really it's not about volunteering because that makes a separation, I think, between Nick and the kids, but more it's just him having um, friends and like developing friendships and relationships with them. I'm 14 years old and I go to Punahou School. I'm a freshman and um, I always enjoy coming here because I feel like I can bring joy to people and some kids. I play music with them and I, I like seeing smiles on their face you know, and just like bringing, I don't know, happiness to them when being their friend is something that I really like doing. We can't take for granted that these programs and services will continue without the help of the community. Um, our early intervention, much if not all our early intervention that services zero to three year old, those programs and services are provided for free. And many of our programs are uh, funded by federal and state contracts and those funds are diminishing and so in order for our statewide organization to remain a statewide organization, we need the community support to help that continue. We are one of the few organizations that has services that span an individual's entire life. Our objective as an organization is to seek to transition children from our early intervention program to our youth services where appropriate and possible, and then through adult services and ultimately employment. When somebody gets that first job, 
and uh, they get that first paycheck and they're a little nervous. I love watching them grow and evolve and have the same opportunities that the rest of us take for granted. So I'm a teacher, I teach uh, five-year-olds, and um, every year the kids in my class know about Katie because I share with them about Katie. And they might see us at a football game and she'll be in a wheelchair sitting there and I've encouraged them to come up. And I think it's really important for people to know the kids take their kids take their um, cues from their parents. So if a parent comes up to Katie and I and is warm and um, even works through their uncomfortableness, their child will do so instantly. I mean, their kids take their, they know what to do by looking at their parents. So I guess I would ask parents to stretch themselves and come say hi, lean down and talk to Katie. She may not talk to you, but give her a hi and a smile and your kids are gonna do the same thing. And I think that that's a really neat thing to do. Coming here and seeing kids that are different and they're treated different, still they can be really strong and loving to other people and living life with joy. People my age, they like to complain about stupid things that why are you complaining when you can be happy and they really taught me that I need to be more ha a happier person. When Gabe was an infant and that day that we drove up that was our first time there and I think we were in such a blind fog you just initially hear what's wrong with your child and you realize you're there for a reason but we've learned that um, not to focus on what's wrong but every little thing about Gabe is what's special to, about him and that is our normal that's what he brings to our lives he's learned from being in the Easter Seals program throughout his life and the many teachers that have come into his life but he's been our best teacher it's been an incredible journey and he's been the best tour guide. Um, this is our normal and we don't look at what's wrong anymore. I think that disappeared the moment we got there. It was to look at Gabe and focus on who he is, what's special about him, and to be able to create a world for all of us that helps us live better, to learn about everything we've had to go through raising a child with special needs. I have another daughter, she's 21, and my husband passed away a year and a half ago. My husband was sick for five and a half years with cancer, and he was a huge part of Katie's life, a very, very active father. So we've had a really big transition for our family. Daily life is, it's hard at times. Of all the things on earth that I'm the most grateful for, I had really good parents who loved me and um, made me feel like I could, um, I could do anything. I, I didn't know this was going to be it. Hearing the stories along the way of the families when they talk about, you know, it's supposed to be the happiest day of their life and they go through the whole labor and delivery process and then the doctor comes in and says, I'm sorry. Um, your child may not walk, your child may not talk. We don't know how, what the life expectancy is of your child. And me being a mom of a four-year-old and a one-year-old, one it really resonates with me that I'm imagining how I would feel if that news was delivered to me on that day when my son and my daughter were both born. Um, and knowing that Easter Seals is there to help those families from the birth of their child all the way throughout the entire lifespan of that child and knowing that I can be a part of helping to provide the funds necessary for these programs and services to continue and that really means a lot to me and, and really resonates in my heart as to why I do this job and that something I do really really matters in so many lives in our community. They come here because they want to have an opportunity to make somebody else's life more enriched, somebody else's life of higher quality. And I, I remember situations where employees would actually offer to give up part of their pay just so we could have more support or to keep somebody else employed or to do some other type of activity in a program. And just, you cannot, 
you cannot export that to the private community. That's something that is closely held in the nonprofit environment. So when you take a look at the families who need our services and appreciate it so greatly and the sacrifices they have to go through, and then you take a look at this army of employees who are so dedicated and just continue to show up for work and do the right things, it's, um, it made me a better person, made me more appreciative of life, and and really appreciative of what individuals have to go through. You never know what's going on on the other side of that person. Easter Seals is a great organization. I strongly feel that we all have an obligation to take care of our, each other. And that's what Easter Seals is, is in the business of taking care of each other, of your children or your neighbor's children or an adult in your family who has been disabled his entire life, but needs help. When you give money to Easter Seals, you are taking care of your neighbors and your family. And that's what this is all about, isn't it? Um, so, reach into your pocket now. <laughs> uh, we hope you recognize the commitment of the staff, of the volunteers that support our organization, and of the quality that we, of the services and the programs we provide to the community. And we appeal to you to engage with Easter Seals. We need your contributions and your donations. We need your volunteer support. From his days in the Army nearly seven decades ago, when he won the Congressional Medal of Honor, the nation's highest military award to his nearly 50 years in the United States Senate representing Hawaii, Senator Inouye has long championed the cause of justice and equality for all Americans, including people living with disabilities and other special needs. He has contributed to the passage of the major legislation that ensures that people with disabilities can live, learn, work, and play in all of their communities. The legislation includes the Americans with Disabilities Act, the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act of 1975, the Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988, and countless other civil rights laws for people with disabilities. It is an impressive array of legislation for children and adults with disabilities as well as their families. So please join me in thanking Senator Inouye for a full lifetime of service. Senator, congratulations. I'm especially pleased to be here because you also look after the families. Easter Seal provides assistance to the family. For that, as a veteran, I thank you. You may contact our organization, you may contact me personally, but please give as generously as you are able and know that your money will be well spent, and again, that we will be responsible stewards on your behalf. Please join me in extending a heartfelt kukua, wishing this amazing organization another 70 years of success. And if at all possible, please consider making a donation or volunteering your services. Both are greatly appreciated. On behalf of Easter Sales Hawaii, mahalo and aloha. Thank you.